It's showtime! I talked about what other people regret, but what do I regret? Other than contact with other people, that gets me sick. And don't feel bad that I have to make a video while I'm sick. It's not a big deal. If I was smart, I would have just had some videos pre-recorded that I could release in times like this. I, however, am more of a spontaneous person and don't really plan things out, which just so happens to be how people often end up regretting a character. Now, in my case, there's no one I actually regret that I just wish I did not have because I wish for everybody at least at C0. So I have them. It helps me make some content and um, I just like to have them, you know? never know when they're going to become really good or when they're going to get a team that looks really fun. Since I wish for everybody, the way I like to think of this question towards someone like me is who would I get rid of if I had to get rid of somebody? Right away, one character comes to mind, and that is Eula. She may dance a twirl around the battlefield, slapping things around with a big steel slapstick and competing with the Sarbamba for destructive power. That does not mean I enjoy her for that. I do enjoy the playstyle of Eula, kind of. In reality, I just rarely ever use her. One aspect of Eula that I don't particularly enjoy is her rotation. It's not that it's difficult. It's not that it's brain dead easy, it's just that it's a little bit too formulaic. The same problem I have with the Morgana team. You pretty much play it in the exact same way every single time, and I don't find that way or the results particularly exciting. The funny thing is, is I find it really hard to distinguish a character like Eula and Ito apart, but I really enjoy Ito and I just don't enjoy Eula that much. When you look at it, they both use all of their abilities in a very formulaic way. Ito starts his burst, throws an Ushi, does a charge attack, does his build stacks, does a charge attack again, and throws Ushi at the end. Just how Eula also has an optimal sequence to use all of her abilities in a certain order to end up with the most stacks possible and therefore the biggest burst. It could also just be that I'm not really a big number type of person, I really enjoy characters Characters like Yoimiya, Ayato, characters that attack really fast and get a lot of small numbers. And if I do want a big number, I can just go play my C2 Raiden Shogun and get just as big a number as Eula, if not bigger. Next up, another one to conform to the public opinion, and that is Xiao. When I started this game, we had beta footage of Xiao for a long time, and I was really looking forward to this character. I couldn't wait till he released. I loved that he had a transformation burst, however, I did have dreams that he'd be able to either auto attack or to plunge. And while yes, nothing is stopping me from auto attacking, I don't want to do it because it sucks. And what I really wish sucked was his plunge attacks. I wish they sucked enemies in instead of blowing them outwards. He's an animo character, wouldn't be unreasonable to create a little bit of a vortex at the bottom of each of his plunges, that way enemies get drawn in rather than being knocked away. That one thing remains to be my number one reason why I almost never use this character anymore. It may be a minor complaint, and there may be many times where the enemies just die before it really becomes a problem, but happening every once in a while is more than enough for me to just never really want to play this character. Next up is a character that may shock a lot of people, and that is Ayaka. Let me explain something though, because technically she wouldn't be on this list because there's one reason why I would definitely keep her, and that is probably everyone's least favorite thing about her, her special dash. I, for one, love these dashes. I wish more characters had them. I wish every Catalyst character at a minimum had these things. I acknowledge that they are worse for dodging. In actual combat applications, they're not that good, but I tend to prioritize overworld exploration, especially when the combat in this game is not that difficult. So the one thing I do want to keep Ayaka around for is her dash passive, particularly the fact that it's cryo and that just makes it way better than a character like Mona's because she can travel on water indefinitely. Let's talk about the aspect of her I don't enjoy so much and that is her kit, particularly her burst. Yes, her burst is absolutely amazing. It's one of the best in the entire game and it does a ludicrous amount of damage. I personally find it very unsatisfying to use both in terms of visuals and sound design. It's not ideal to use if an enemy isn't frozen or stationary. Then you have her elemental skill. It's just like AoE Kaya with some more damage. I mean, that's good. It's not a bad skill. I've seen it hit pretty hard. And even though I enjoyed the charge attack and dashing around and that kind of stuff, I don't enjoy it enough to say that I would keep it over other characters. That being said, I do want to keep her around just for her dash because I feel like it's bound to be useful eventually, especially with something like Fontaine being somewhat around the corner. Got to be useful there, right? Okay, moving on to another cold ass take, and that is Klee. I've talked about Klee before. What many people don't know is I actually mained Klee on my alt account, which used to be my main account for a long, long time. My alt account was almost entirely free to play, save for a couple battle passes and a few months of Welcome Moon in the beginning. So Klee was really all I had. I didn't have that many characters to work with. I mained Klee and I even used main DPS Beto. Even though I eventually dropped the Beto, I did keep using Klee. I kept using Klee for basically the entire 
entire time that account was being played, which was about halfway through Inazuma. All this to say, I'm pretty familiar with Klee. And even though I've been interested to see how she can perform with all these new characters we've got, especially characters like Yolan, I haven't exactly got around to building her yet, and I'm not exactly like super eager to. I just want to see because I used to main her, so I want to see how much better can she be. AKA, how much can Yolan carry her because Yolan is broken. So why is it that I would regret Klee? Well, is it because of her DPS? That is a part of it. She is rather weak. One of the weakest, if not the weakest limited five star we have. That's not exactly the problem. I have powerful characters. I don't need every character to be strong. I could just have some that are just for fun. But let's talk about that. Is Klee fun? Well, number one, we all know fun is very subjective. Everyone enjoys different things. And while I do enjoy many aspects of Klee's kit, there are also aspects of it I don't enjoy, like her skill and her burst. I find both of them to be rather underwhelming to use and both often leave you feeling unsatisfied like any quest that involves Tusser. Funny enough, we got another character eventually, Yanfei, who basically plays the exact same as Klee, but I think feels a lot better than Klee. She's not necessarily stronger, I don't really know for sure, but I do like the flow of her skills and burst and charge attacks a lot more than Klee's. I've also said it before, but Klee has to put in more effort than literally everyone else to do less damage than everyone else, and that's just a real bummer. Makes really, really takes away from playing her. Before going on to the last one, we're just going to go through some quick honorable mentions of characters that I may regret if situations were a little bit different or some things had never changed. Albedo. Before the Husk set and the Cinnabar Spindle ever hit the scene, Albedo was easily the worst limited 5 star we had. He only had a couple useful teams and his purpose there was basically just to be inoffensive, not interfere with the reactions and offer a little bit of extra damage and maybe give some EM. Without those two new additions, I would have tossed Albedo in a volcano just to have a 5% higher yield on the corn I don't even harvest. Venti. Now it may sound a little bit crazy to say, oh you would get rid of Venti, but I honestly almost never use him. The thing that stops me from actually regretting Venti is one, he was very useful at one point, but two, he's like Kara insurance. You don't use him most of the time, but when you need him, you're glad you have him. You never know when that abyss that has like 25 treasure hoarders or eremites or whatever they may be shows up in the abyss, and Venti will just make that floor a lot easier. Similarly, Sucrose. Due to the fact that I have both Venti and C2 Kazuha, Sucrose doesn't really have a purpose anymore. While I never had to try to get her cons, if I had to yeet her off my account, I would have no problem doing so because I never use her anymore and I probably never will. My number one most regretted, and yeah, I do actually truly regret spending money on this character is Dory. Dory C6. That's right, it's a four star, it's not even a five star. Dory I find to be one of the worst characters in the entire game. She fills an interesting niche. She's a Claymore Electro Healer, that's kind of interesting. She restores energy, she's basically energy healer I like to call her. Also to be clear, the fact that I think she's bad does not correlate to why I regret her. I regret her because she feels really clunky to play. I hate that she's a Claymore Auto Attack Healer that has no innate interruption resistance. It feels atrocious to try to heal with her. That is mostly because she has a claymore. If she was literally using any other weapon, she'd feel a lot better, especially if it was one-handed sword like Chi Chi. At the time, it was just really exciting to have a new electro healer available, especially for the implications for a unit like Eula, even though I don't really use her that much, and for aggravate and catalyze, you know, all that. It's just being tethered to her little lamp and trying to heal with her auto attacks from her C6 is really bad feeling. It just, I felt it to be a very unsatisfying character and one that just feels really clunky. A little bit sad because, you know, her auto attack animations are gorgeous. I love those things. I really wanted her C6 because I wanted to make that work. I thought it could work, you know, at least to some degree, but clearly eh, not so much. I loved her in the Sumeru story. I thought she was a really fun character. I love her design. I just wish I didn't spend money getting C6 of her. Even though some of the characters I put on this list overlap with the popular opinions, there are some that I very much disagree with. I never regretted Sino. I still love that character. I can't wait to see what he can do as we get more supports that can work with him. Child has always been one of my favorite characters. I love his kit. I wouldn't change anything other than his constellations. But you know, it's a pretty minor complaint. With that, it's time for me to go back to wallowing in my sickness and playing Fire Emblem. So thank you to my members and my patrons for supporting the channel. Links to my socials will be down below if you would like to become one of those. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Attaboy! Uh -huh.